In this video, we'll cover the basic operation of the MOSFET. Recall that in our typical enhancement mode N channel MOSFET, the source and drain are insulated from each other by depletion regions when zero voltage is applied to the gate. But when we apply a positive gate source voltage exceeding the threshold voltage, Vt, with a subscript N to remind us that this is an N channel MOSFET, then a conducting N type channel forms between drain and source. It's illustrated here through which current can flow. With a small voltage VDS applied between drain and source, a drift current begins to flow from drain to source. It flows just like the drift current through any resistance. The current ID is proportional to the voltage applied between drain and source and is inversely proportional to the resistance of the channel, RDS, the resistance between drain and source. The larger the overdrive voltage, VOV, defined as the gate source voltage minus the threshold voltage, the more charge appears in the channel region and the lower the channel resistance becomes. So it's not surprising that RDS is inversely proportional to VOV. Now the overdrive voltage and the charge density in the channel region are related by the per unit area gate capacitance, also known as the specific capacitance, Cox, of the gate. Furthermore, if we recognize that the channel region is a resistor like any other, it's not surprising that its resistance is proportional to its length, L, and inversely proportional to its width, which is the dimension into the screen in this cross section. Finally, since charge carrier transport occurs via drift due to the electric field arising from the applied VDS, the resistance is inversely proportional to the channel's majority carrier mobility, mu n. Thus, we have this expression for the channel resistance. Remember that this applies when the channel region is inverted, that is, when the gate source voltage exceeds the threshold voltage so that the overdrive voltage is positive, and when small values of VDS are applied. Next, let's consider an experiment where VGS is held constant and VDS is gradually increased slowly starting from zero. Now, as long as VGS is below the threshold voltage of the MOSFET, the transistor will be off. Drain and source will be insulated from each other and zero drain current will flow, as shown here. As soon as VGS exceeds the threshold voltage, the curve will rise with a slope equal to GDS, one over the channel resistance, RDS, whose expression we found on the last slide. You can see that with VGS held constant and VDS kept sufficiently small, the IV relationship of the MOSFET is linear, just like a resistor. As VGS is increased, the resistance decreases and the slope increases as more and more charge accumulates in the channel region. So we can write an expression now for the current that flows through the resistive channel region. With small value of VDS applied, the current that flows is proportional to VDS and to the channel conductance. This bracketed term here, GDS, which is one over the channel resistance, RDS. The expression is mu n c ox w over l and v o v. Now, this term here, mu n c ox, arises so often in expressions for transistor behavior that we're going to use a shorthand k n prime to denote it. Moreover, 
these terms appear together so often, mu n's d ox w over l, that will make a further definition of kn for all those constants put together. And of course, kn is equal to kn prime times the transistor w over l. Note that kn prime consists of constants that just depend on the way the transistor is manufactured and so are not usually under the circuit designer's control. Whereas the transistor size, W over L, is often at the discretion of the integrated circuit designer. This mode of operation where the drain current is linearly related to a small value of VDS applied and with the channel region inverted is called triode operation. And in triode, a MOSFET behaves very much like a resistor whose value is under the control of the gate overdrive voltage. Now remember that physically the MOSFET is a symmetric device. So by convention, for an N-MOSFET, we simply define the drain as being the one with the higher voltage applied to it. So with the channel region inverted, we see that the voltage between gate and source is VGS, but the voltage between gate and drain at this end of the channel is somewhat less than VGS. Therefore, we get a channel profile such as the one illustrated here, where the channel region is more inverted near the source and less inverted near the drain. As long as the value of VDS is very small compared to the overdrive voltage, the impact of this is negligible. But as VDS increases, and especially as it starts approaching the value of the overdrive voltage, then the effect can't be neglected anymore. It can be modeled pretty straightforwardly just by recognizing that the channel is wider at one end or has a larger uh, amount of charge density at the source end than it does at the drain end. So we can simply consider it having an average inversion level that's equal to VOV minus half the value of VDS. So as VDS increases, we can calculate the value of drain current using this expression here, which looks just like the expression from the last slide, except that we've replaced VOV with this new, more accurate expression, VOV minus one half VDS. Notice that as long as VDS is much, much smaller than the overdrive voltage, this expression is well approximated by the expression we had on the last slide, simply neglecting the term one half VDS. Importantly, however, note that this new more accurate expression is no longer linear in VDS. It's actually quadratic in VDS. So if we return now to our experiment where we apply a VGS exceeding the threshold voltage that the channel is inverted, and we start slowly increasing VDS from zero, we see that we get a straight line at first with a slope proportional to VOV, as long as this term is negligible, but that eventually this term starts to take over and the curve bends and reveals its quadratic nature. Physically, what's happening as we trace this part of the curve is the channel region near the drain is starting to get narrower and narrower and its associated resistance is increasing. So the curve flattens. Note that as this happens, we still consider that the transistor is in triode mode. It's just that the IV relationship is no longer as linear. This triode mode expression persists as long as VOV is less than, um, sorry, VDS rather, is less than VOV, which is also referred to as VDS stat or VDS saturation for reasons that will become obvious soon. Now, if you just look at this expression, what happens when VDS approaches VOV? In fact, at that point, the curve becomes perfectly flat. And if we substitute in VDS equals VOV into this expression, we would see 
that it reaches a value of one half k n v o v squared. At this point, when the drain source voltage reaches VDS sat or the overdrive voltage, what's happened is that the gate drain voltage or the voltage between gate and the drain end of the channel is reached the threshold voltage, which means in principle that it's no longer inverted at this end. We sometimes refer to a channel in this state as pinched off at the drain end. Now an interesting thing happens as you increase VDS beyond this point, the current doesn't start to decline. Instead, it stays constant at, or roughly constant anyway, at the value obtained at the saturation point. For this reason, we refer to this mode of operation of the MOSFET as saturation. And it is the most useful operating mode of the transistor for using it as an amplifier. Once the channel is pinched off, further increases in VDS have very little effect on the drain current. The current just stays roughly constant at Kn times VOV squared times a half all through this region. Just remember, this entire curve is traced out by keeping VGS constant at a value above the threshold voltage. If we change VGS, we get a new curve here. For example, if we lower VGS while still keeping it above the threshold voltage, we remember that this increases at first with a shallower slope. And since we've got a lower value of VGS, we've got a lower associated overdrive voltage. So VDS sat decreases and we expect the curve to start to flatten sooner. So we would expect the curve like this for a lower value of VGS. And of course, if VGS is lowered below the threshold voltage, well, then we've just got a transistor that's off and we'll have zero current flowing regardless of the value of VDS. So in summary, the MOSFET has three modes of operation that we're interested in. With no gate source voltage applied or gate source voltage applied below the transistor's threshold voltage, the source and drain are insulated from each other and no channel region is present and no current flows. With a gate source voltage exceeding the threshold voltage and a very small value of VDS applied, then the channel is inverted and current can flow between drain and source in proportion to VDS and in proportion to the overdrive voltage. As VDS is increased, and especially as it increases uh, and starts approaching the overdrive voltage, then the drain end of the channel starts to become pinched off and the current starts increasing more slowly with VDS until finally the drain end is pinched off. At this point, we say the transistors in saturation and further increases in VDS give rise to very little change in drain current.